Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and I'm experimenting with a field programmable analog array that's the result of many decades of work by many graduate students studying under my colleague, Professor Jennifer Hassler. The folks at Okika Devices that manufactured this particular board just sent me a set of calibration files for the particular board that's on loan to me. That's board number 169. So I'm in this RAS30 prog underscore assembly slash libs directory. This is all running in the Ubuntu virtual box image that you yourself can go download from Jennifer Hassler's website. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. This is all open source. So even if you don't have a board, you can create designs for the board and compile those designs. And you can also try things out in the simulator. Anyway, I'm supposed to untar this and it puts things into different directories. Now let's run the tools itself. It's really important when you click this CADSP icon that you only click it once because it takes a while for everything to come up and you're tempted to click it again. And right now there's nothing to check to see if it's already running and that creates chaos. So you have to wait until this little RASP design window comes up. So I'm going to select the on-chip DAC to ADC loopback test. Click no when it says this. So here's the test. So this is what gets compiled. We need to choose the board type, which is 3.0A, and enter the chip number, which is 169. Ah, I need to plug in my board. One moment. Okay, you saw the little blinking down here. Okay, let's compile the design. Again, this is something you can do yourself. Ah, there we go. And now let's program the chip. This takes a while. Okay, sometimes you'll get this connection issue and you can fix it by unplugging the board and then plugging it back in. SRAM data uploaded. So this chip has the analog and the routing fabric for all those analog elements, but it also has some digital stuff and it has an MSP430 core. And if you want, you can write programs that will run on that along with your analog stuff. But mostly the 430 is for handling all the various stuff that needs to happen with the programming because there's several things that need programmed. There's the floating gates associated with the routing fabric itself. And that's interesting because something you can do is you don't have to program those switches all the way on or off. You can program them to be open partially. So you can do some of the computation in the routing fabric itself. And then you're also programming things like the bias currents of some of the built-in operational transconductance amplifiers. Anyway, programming is complete, so we can take data. And let's see what we got here. Ah, look at that. So this is a loopback test, just taking one of the DACs on the chip and routing it to one of the ADCs on the chip. And blue would be ideal. And you see that the green dot, the major data, matches the blue line pretty well. That's now working a lot better than what I did in the last video, where I just randomly used the calibration data file from a different board. So now we're cooking with gas.